Parquet presents the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> The makers of Parquet Margarine, present each week at this time, Harold Perry is The Great Gildersleeve, written by John Wheaton. We'll hear from The Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. But first, I want to give you some facts about a food that's becoming more important than ever these days. That food is nutritious Parquet Margarine, the delicious economical spread for bread made by Kraft. So, here are a few simple facts that may explain why thousands of American families are using parquet margarine three times a day, at the table and for cooking, too. First, parquet is a wholesome vegetable margarine made from carefully selected American farm products. Second, parquet margarine is a highly nourishing food, one of the best energy foods you can serve, and a reliable year-round source of important vitamin A. Third, parquet is the margarine that tastes so deliciously good. Its flavor is delicate and appetizing. It's entirely different from old-time margarine. One taste will prove that to you. So for all these reasons, get acquainted with economical parquet margarine now. Tomorrow, ask your food dealer for parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine, made by Kraft. <laughs> Let's join our friend, the great Gildersleeve. We find him in the land of Nod, sleeping the sleep of a man who has put his car upon blocks, bought his full quota of war bonds, and saved four and a half pounds of bacon fat. While outdoors, Jack Frost has been preparing a little surprise for him. What do you want? Do you see what I see? I don't see anything. Go away. But, but look outdoors. Look out the window. Ew, daylight. Take it away. <laughs> no, no. Get up and look. Look at the trees. Look at the ground. Ew, daylight. It gets all over everything. <laughs> but I'm trying to tell you, Uncle, it's been snowing. Well, tell Bertie or somebody. Don't come by. Did you say snowing? If you don't believe me, get up and look. It can't be. It's 30 days past September, April, June, and... Here's a handful of it on the windowsill. Look. By George, it is snow. Snow in October. Why, it hasn't snowed in October since the blizzard of 88. And that was in January. <laughs> Look. You can see your breath, huh? Hey, oh, it must be freezing. You're darn right it's freezing. The thermometer is down to 25. And you know that hole that Mr. Clanahan dug in the front yard? Yes. The snow filled it up. You wouldn't know it was there. Oh, my goodness. The water pipes will freeze. Yeah, they will. That Clanahan's a fine water commissioner. I've been after him for six days to get that hole filled in. Ooh, listen to that wind. You can close that window, will you, Leroy? Come on, Unc. The house won't get any warmer till you get up and start the furnace. Leroy, I wish you wouldn't drag in these unpleasant truths so early in the morning. <laughs> well, come on, get up. Don't stand there staring at me. Go down and tell them I'll be right down. If Tell Bertie to keep the coffee warm. <laughs> All right, go back to sleep if you want. But Bertie's making buckwheat cake. Yeah, I don't give buckwheat cake. Oh, buckwheat, one side, gang away. <laughs> the floor is cold. Where's my bathrobe? Where's my bathrobe, Bertie? Oh, I slept in it. <laughs> Never mind, I found it, Bertie. All the buckwheat. <laughs> Coffee, Uncle Mark? Uh, thank you, my dear. Uh, pass your cup, will you? Hold it still. It, I can't. I'm shivering. I'll hold it, Mr. Gill, please. Ooh, that's worse. Grab it, somebody. I'm sorry. I'm all over goose pimples. <laughs> Why don't you go put a sweater on, Bertie? I got on so many sweaters now. I can hardly bend at the elbow. And my teeth chattering like a pair of dice. Yeah. 
Marjorie, take a look at that thermometer there, will you? I can tell you from here, Uncle Morse. It's cold. Yes, we'll have to do something about this. While you're up, my dear, hand me a cigar, will you? What do we do? All sit around it and warm our hands? <laughs> no, Leroy. We go out to the garage and we bring in some firewood. And I do mean you. Oh, me and my big mouth. Uh, I'm going to call up Clanahan right now before those water pipes freeze. Better put your rubbers on, Leroy. That snow's wet. Oh, I don't need any. Put your rubbers on, young man. Hello. If I want to speak to Commissioner Clanahan. He won't be in? The fine water commissioner he is. And you can tell him I said so. The commissioner is not expected in today. <laughs> yeah, and if anything happens to those pipes, it's on him. Oh, Leroy, close the door. As soon as Leroy comes back, I'll go down and see if I can start old Vesuvius. Uh, Bertie. Yes, sir? Uh, Bertie, have you ever had any acquaintance with a furnace? <laughs> Oh, I know how to work it. You just fiddle with that little doohickey out in the hall. But that was last year. Last year, we were burning oil. With coal, there's a little more to it. Oh. It's nothing difficult, you understand. I think you'd be very good at it. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody who's as good as you are with a shovel. Oh, the shovel. <laughs> well, that comes into it. <laughs> but it's not all shoveling. Well, I don't know about that. I know how to run that doohickey. I ran it last year. That doohickey is called a thermostat, Bertie. I wanted to speak to you about that. As I remember it, you ran it last year at about 80. You said 70. Yes, and I used to set it at 70. But the minute I got out of the house, you sneaked it up to 80. Well, sometimes it gets colder than others. Now, this is serious, Bertie. This year, we got to save fuel. The temperature is going to be set at 65 degrees, and that's where it's going to stay. 65? Maybe it's going to stay, but I ain't. Oh, you wouldn't leave us, Bertie. Yes, ma'am. I can't work in those 65 degrees. I'll go on away from here. Oh, now, Bertie. I'll go for some work for somebody else if I have to. Uh, calm yourself, Bertie, and just remember this. If anybody offers you more than 65 degrees this winter, they're traitors. Huh? <laughs> you don't want to work for traitors, do you, Bertie? No, sir, not me. Well, remember that. The government says we've all got to help save fuel, Bertie. And the way to do it is to hold the temperature down to 65 degrees. Besides, 65 is warm enough for anybody. Sixty-five won't hatch no eggs. No, but it'll keep you on your toes. It'll keep you from falling asleep at the broom. <laughs> <laughs> well, if the government says so, I guess that's the way it's got to be. But if it's all the same to the government, I'm going to buy me some woolies and throw myself into them. <laughs> I'm going to start looking at fur coats. Fur coats? Oh, brother, there we get into inflation. <laughs> oh, that's Leroy. Huh? He's probably got his arms full. Yeah. I'll let him in. Yeah. Oh, close it, Leroy, close it. Here's the wood. Where will I put it? On the dining room table would be very nice. Wise guy. Quick, move the fire screen, Bertie. There. Can I light the fire on? Before we do that, young man, let's get down in the cellar and start the furnace. I want to teach you how to take out the ashes. Holy smokes, do I have to do all the work around here? Oh, no. no. Okay. I don't see what you had to go and change the furnace to coal for anyway. The oil was working all right. There wasn't any ashes. He didn't have to get up in the morning and shake it. It never went out. It was swell. It, it was swell, all right. It was a comfort and a convenience. But we're going to have to give up our conveniences, Leroy. There isn't, a, there isn't going to be enough oil to go around this winter. That's why we're burning coal. It doesn't have to come so far, so it's easier to get. Well, it's no easier for me, I can tell you that. Look here, young man. You want to help in this war, don't you? Well, sure I do. I go right out and join the Navy. They'd let me. Why, so would I. Me too. Did I say that? <laughs> I think we all want to help. But I'm too old to join, Leroy, and you're too young. We've just got to help in the only way we can, and here at home. So remember, every time you carry out a load of ashes, you're in the fight as much as the next man. Well, how about you getting in a too, huh? Even me. <laughs> I'll get up in the mornings and wrestle with the furnace if it kills me. And I don't have to tell you, young man, when Uncle Throckmorton gets up off his pants, this country is really all out. <laughs> Yeah. Let's go down and take the insides out of that furnace. <laughs> Very good. Ah, the heat's beginning to come up. Oh. I'll have it as warm as toast here in a jiffy, Marjorie. Now remember, Uncle Mort, 65. Yeah, that's as warm as most toast. The only, <laughs> the only trouble is if this cold snap lasts three days, we'll be out of cold. I'd better call up and order some more. Yes, you better. Yeah. Oh, my goodness, I should have done this before, my dear. Hello? It's Summerfield Coal Company. I want a ton of coal delivered to my house this afternoon. In a week. 
That's a fine way to run a coal company. What's your name? Granahan. Well, this is Gildersleeve. No wonder you're such a rotten water commissioner. You spend all your time peddling coal. Well, now you listen here, Clanahan. I want a ton of coal delivered to my house before the day is over, if you have to bring it yourself. And furthermore, I want that hole in my front yard filled in. Water commissioner. If my pipes freeze up, I'll sue you. Uh, I guess I told him. Hello? Why, you... He hung up. <laughs> What did he say, Uncle Mort? Nothing fit for ladies' ears, my dear. Wasn't even fit for mine. Where's Leroy? Oh, he's over shoveling off Mrs. Ransom's walk. Oh, Mrs. Ransom, eh? Maybe I ought to go help him. He doesn't need any help, Uncle Mort. He's getting paid for it, you know. Oh, say, I wonder if she's got any heat over there. I wonder what kind of a furnace she's got. <laughs> I really couldn't say, Uncle Mort. I wonder if it's been converted. It'd be terrible if it hasn't. Terrible? Yeah. Maybe it's been converted and she hasn't got any coal. Oh, that would be just as bad. Yes, yeah, it would. Or maybe she's got coal and doesn't know how to start the furnace. Uh-huh. All alone there with no man in the house. Yeah. You know what she ought to have? Yes, yeah. a man. Uh, no, some firewood. Maybe I ought to call up an order or something, huh? Don't you think you ought to find out whether she's got any first? Oh, that's a great idea, Marjorie. I'll go over there myself and find out. Uh, thanks for the tip. Oh, no, don't thank me. We're going anyway. Uh, where's my overcoat? Oh, here it is, right in the closet. But not tight now. You know, I think I'll take her a few sticks of firewood just in case. I'll take these logs Leroy brought in. There goes our fire. Oh, my hat. Put it on my head, will you, my dear? He likes you better in your air raid helmet. I'll have the hat if you don't mind. You don't have to put it on at such a rakish angle. Put it on straight. Oh, you look sweet that way. There you are. I'll open the door for you. Uh, thank you, my dear. Over the river and through the woods to Grandmother's house we go. Hey, Alice! The horse knows the way to carry the sleigh to the wide and drifting snow. Hey, Mark, where's he going? He's going next door to warm up Mrs. Ransom. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be with us again in a few seconds. Meantime, plenty of energy is mighty important these busy wartime days. For hard work, yes, and for hard play. Of course, energy comes from the foods you eat, so it's important that you know which foods provide the most energy. Now, one of the very best energy foods you can serve, and one that's economical, too, is delicious parquet margarine made by Kraft. That's a good thing, because... Parquet margarine is a three times a day source of important food energy. Parquet is a grand tasting spread for bread, rolls, or toast at breakfast, lunch, or dinner. It's a real flavor shortening for baking better tasting pastries, cakes, and cookies. Parquet is grand for pan frying, too, because it doesn't spatter or stick to the pan. And besides furnishing energy, every pound of parquet margarine provides 9,000 units of important vitamin A. So, why not give delicious, economical parquet margarine a try in your household? Remember, it's parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine, made by Kraft. Now, let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. Like an angel of mercy with an armload of wood, he trudges up the walk to the widow Ransom's door. Where whom should he meet but... Hooker! Gildersleeve! What mischief are you up to? The same mischief you're up to, Horace. I merely came over to make sure Mrs. Ransom has enough heat. Yeah, so did I, and I've got some logs here to prove it. I... I brought her a hot water bottle, so there. Uh, Why don't you just go home, Judge? I'll take care of this. Oh, no, you won't. It's Horace. Good morning. And Jack Martin. <laughs> Aren't you sweet to call? Come in, won't you? After you, Jack Martin. You said it. Step inside so I can shut out that dreadful wind. Uh, uh, won't you let me take your things, gentlemen? Allow me to hang them up. Oh, thank you, Jack. Why, Jack Martin, what fish you brought me? Wood for your fireplace. For my fireplace? I declare you're the most thoughtful man. Uh, I brought you something, too, Mrs. Ransom. It's in one of my pockets here. Yeah, the judge brought a hot water bottle in case his gout gets bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
That water bottle, nothing. Blackberry cordial. Huh? Blackberry cordial. Oh, I just love it. It's my favorite. You sneaky old... How did you know it was my favorite? You didn't say anything about that. (laughs) Why, I haven't had any blackberry cordial since I left home. Uh, Uh, Come in by the fireplace, won't you? I've been trying to start a poor little old fire here, but all I had was newspapers, and I don't know a thing about fire. Don't you worry, Mrs. Ransom. We'll soon have it blazing for you. Let's have those logs, Gildy. Wait a minute. They're my logs. No. Horace gets to lay the fire because he brought the cauldron. Oh. I declare I don't know what I'd do without you, Bart, because I'm just about frozen to death here. I haven't any furnace. I haven't any coal. You haven't any coal? No. I just never thought to order any, and I don't know what I'm going to do. I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to come over to my house. You're going to have lunch and dinner with us and spend the night. If Margie will put you up. Oh, Throckmorton, you're so masterful. Oh, am I? <laughs> well, uh, I hope you have a good time, Leela. Yes, she will. It's been some time since I've enjoyed a sample of Bertie's cooking. Yeah. She's a fine cook. You're wasting your breath, Hooker. Of course, I haven't got any heat in my house either. But I dare say I'll get along. Yeah, I dare say you will. <laughs> oh, you poor thing. Rock Martin, did you hear that? The judge hasn't any heat in his house either. <laughs> yeah, that's a shame. I <laughs> know. Oh, Let's make it a house party, yes. shall we? Yes. Oh, how about it, Judge? All right with me, if it's all right with you, then. Oh, he'd love to have you. I knew he would. Just the three of us, we can have more fun. No fun. Fudge. We'll make fudge. And full passing. Wonderful. Ross Morton, you think of the best party? Yes, don't I? All right, Hooker, you can come to lunch, but that's all. <laughs> I love the snow. I declare I just love it to death. I've had the most glorious afternoon. Yeah, me too. <laughs> You know, this is the fish no I've ever seen in my whole entire life. I golly, I love it, too. Makes me feel like a kid again. Yeah. Oh, brother. Hop on the sled, Leela, and I'll pull you. <laughs> oh, no, I'm too heavy. You couldn't pull me. Yeah, I can pull you with one finger. Come on, hop on. Well, don't save yourself now. Yeah, that's right. I'll put up your little feet. Not you, Hooker. Come on, Hooker, get off of there. <laughs> Boys, I don't want you to get the fighting over me. And whatever you do, don't anybody try to wash my face with snow. Huh? I just couldn't stand it if you were to wash my face with snow. By George, I've got half a notion to try. Oh, no, you won't. Oh, yes, I will. Oh, no, you won't. Oh, uh, no. Come on, Judge. You hold her and I'll wash her face. Yeah. Oh, no. I'll hold her and you wash her face. <laughs> Fell in Flanahan's hole. <laughs> Get me out of this. Get me out of this. I'm freezing to death. Give me your hand, Judge. Tread water, Judge. Tread water. He doesn't have to. He's standing in mud. <laughs> Come on, Judge. Jump. There. <laughs> Oh, it's cold. Oh, Judge, you're just a mess. Now you better run right in the house before you catch your dad. Yes, come on in. Are you all right, Judge? I'm not saying, Gildersleeve, till I see my lawyer. Poor Judge fell in a hole. Oh, oh stop your whining, you old goat. Rock Mountain. Now, Judge, you just lie in front of the fire till you get warm. He's been lying there for hours. When's he going home? Right now. Ooh, my ankle. Huh? Oh, I'm afraid I've done something to it. Oh, so it's your ankle now, is it? I can't stand on it. Ooh, oh, you poor child. Oh, uh, the poor widow fellow. Wiggy, 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 wiggy. Oh, well, maybe that's the drugstore with the camp oil. I'll go. Hooker, you're an old fake. There's nothing the matter with your ankle, and you know it. <laughs> 
What are you going to do about it, Gildy? <laughs> Good evening, Mrs. Ransom. You brought the tampon? Yes, or I trust you're not feeling indisposed. Oh, no, it's for Judge Hooker here. He fell in a hole. Yes. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, Judge. Uh, how did it happen? I was chasing. Never mind. <laughs> hello, Peavy. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, Peavy, now the judge thinks there's something wrong with his ankle. I'd like to have you take a look at it and give us your expert opinion. <laughs> hmm, ankle, eh? Yes, it has all the earmarks of a fracture. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> oh, in other words, you think it's all right? Well, no, I wouldn't say that either. Well, what would you say? Would you say it's sprained? Well, you put me in a difficult position, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'm not a physician, you know. I'm a pharmacist. All right. You've got a license, haven't you? Well, I'm a notary public. <laughs> <laughs> That's better than nothing, isn't it? Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> you, you've got me a little mixed up. All right, then. Forget the license. Just answer me yes or no. Is there anything wrong with the judge's ankle or isn't there? Well, if you want to know... Remember, uh, Mr. Peavy, anything you say may be used against you. Well, uh, Come on, Peavy, I'm just asking for your frank opinion, man to man. You are a man, aren't you? Well, now I was... Neither will I! Good night, Peavy! <laughs> <laughs> all right, Hooker, you can stay to dinner, but that's all. <laughs> It's 11 o'clock. 11? Oh, shank of the evening, Leela. Why, Marjorie isn't even in yet. I must get my beauty sleep. You couldn't be any more beautiful than you are, Leela. Uh, that's true, Judge, but brother, is it corny? Now, shock, Morton. Huh? But I really should be starting for my little old trundle bed. Yeah, so should Hooker. Oh, I think I hear Marjorie outside. Yeah, shut the door, my dear. Well, Marjorie, did you have a good time? Oh, wonderful. An old-fashioned play life in October. Mm, certainly has put roses in your cheeks. <laughs> yes, my dear. You look pretty enough to kiss. In fact, you look as if you had been. Oh, well, good morning. With sharp eyes, you <laughs> yeah? Well, I've got an early day tomorrow, so if you don't mind, I'll say good night. Good night, Judge. Good night, Marjorie. Good night, Mrs. Ramsey. Good night, honey, child. Good night, Uncle Moore. Uh, mm -hmm. Good night, my dear. <laughs> Sorry I can't drive you home, Judge, but I put my car up on blocks. That's all right, Gildy. I'll get home somehow. <laughs> oh. oh, now you can't go home tonight with that ankle. Drop, Morton, you'll have to let Judge Hooker sleep in your den or someplace. What? Thanks, Gildy. Awfully sorry to put you out, old man. Yeah. Well, I should be starting to bed. Uh, could you show me my room, Drop, Morton? Uh, I could I? <laughs> now, let me have your satchel. <laughs> Thank you. Good night, Judge. Oh, don't get up. I do hope your ankle will be much better in the morning. Oh, I hope it will. You know darn well it will. <laughs> Good night, Leela. Good night. Uh. My, seems strange walking up these stairs with you, Sack Martin. Oh, uh, does it, Leela? Seems to me very natural. Really, Sack Martin? What do you mean by that? Uh, how else would we get up there? <laughs> Oh, here's my room, Lena. Yes, I mean your room. Oh, what a nice room. Yes, I put the bath towels here, and here's an extra pillow, and here's a nice warm quilt, and then in case it really gets chilly... Why? I put an electric heating pad in your bed. Well, that's just the sweetest thing I ever heard of. If there's anything else you need... Oh, I've got everything in my little bag, thank you. Oh, uh, well, then, uh, uh, good night, Lena. Good night, Trot Martin. You sure you don't want me to tuck you in? <laughs> Why, Trot Martin, you devil, you. Yeah, I was only joking, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Trot <Lewis. laughs> Oh, me, what an angel. I hope I dream about her tonight. All right, Hooker, let's get to bed. You take this couch and I'll take the leather. Is this enough blankets for you? I suppose so. Well, then good night. And please do me a favor. What's that? Don't snore. I never do. Uh, Don't you lock the house up, Gildy? I have. I always go all over before I go to bed to make sure. Yeah? Well, you're a nervous old woman, you old goat. 
I am not. But I know there's such a thing as burglars because I send half a dozen of them to jail every week. It, burglars? Just the idea. Can I turn the light out now? Any time. Well, all right. <laughs> Hmm. Oh, Gildy. Yeah. What is it? Aren't you going to tuck me in? Oh! <laughs> I'll break your other ankle, Hooker. Now get to bed. This is the idea. Old goat. Oh, isn't that awful? <laughs> Snoring already. <laughs> Listen to that. What's that? It, Hooker's got me imagining things. Ooh, it's probably in the cellar. Oh, my goodness, there's nobody in the cellar. <laughs> Come on, Gildy, you've got to be a hero. You've got to go down there and face it. My gosh, it is a burglar, all right. He's trying to get in that cellar window, right over there by the furnace. Uh, but I'm ready for him. When he comes through, I'll hit him with his poker. Uh, Aesop, quiet. Shh, quiet, cat. Aesop, go away. Oh, here he comes. Oh! Landslide! Help! Murder! What's going on here? Oh! You wasn't cold, didn't you? Well, you've been after me all day. You and the whole town. Well, here's your cold. You can dig yourself out in the morning. <laughs> There's something I'd like to say to all our listeners. We were lucky here in Summerfield. We had an early cold snap before the real winter set in to remind us to get ready for it while there's still time. Now, you've heard that there's going to be a shortage of fuel oil this winter, and you've probably also heard people say that there's nothing to it but a lot of talk. Well, I got the dope from the government, and this is it. Ninety-five percent of the fuel oil consumed in the East used to be shipped by tanker. Now we have to ship our oil by rail. It takes 280 tank cars to carry as much oil as one ship, so you figure it out for yourself. We haven't got enough tank cars to carry all the oil where it's needed or anywhere near all. There's no shortage of oil. It's a shortage of transportation. That's why the government is telling you to convert your furnace to coal if you can. They're just trying to keep us warm, folks. And if we got any sense, we'll get going right now and do what they're telling us. Have our heating plants checked, insulate our houses, put on weather strips, anything that'll save fuel. If you haven't got the cash for it, you can borrow it from the FHA. It's really an investment. Not only in improving your house and keeping your family comfortable and healthy, but you'll get some of it back in savings on your fuel bill. And you'll know that you're doing something to help our Army and Navy win this war. If that doesn't give you enough of a glow to keep you warm throughout the winter, remember, it's going to be a heck of a lot colder in Russia. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. music heard on this program was composed and conducted by Billy Mills. This is Frank Singman speaking for the makers of Parquet Margarine and inviting you to tune in again next week for the further adventures of the Great Gilders League. Some foods may be getting scarce these days, but good wholesome cheese and other dairy foods are plentiful. And just think of the tasty, satisfying main dinner dishes they'll help you make. Macaroni dishes, rarebit, souffles, sandwiches, fish and egg dishes with cheese sauce. Yes, and dozens more. With cheese dishes becoming so important in your menus, you should know about Pab Step. Yes, Pab Step, the delicious golden cheese food of a hundred different uses. Pab Step is a very special cheese food in many ways. Pab Step slices so neatly, spreads so easily, it's grand for sandwiches or snacks. Pab Step melts and blends so smoothly you'll prefer it for cheese sauces, all kinds of cooked cheese dishes. Pab Step is nourishing, too. It's a fine energy food, rich in milk nutrients and easy to digest. So stock up on Pab Step now. Your food dealer has it in the distinctive round, flat package. Remember, it's Pab Step, P-A-B-S-T dash E-T-T. Pab Step, the delicious golden cheese food of a hundred uses. This program reached you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Mm-hmm.